Hello everybody, let's talk about Hovercraft. So, we're going to have a Hovercraft event, but this video is going up pretty late, so um, you're probably not going to be able to build one in time for the event. Still, I want to explain all of the details to you on how to build them, what they are, what they're useful for, and so on. Hovercraft are a kind of ship that most people have very little experience with, because until natural gravity was invented, there was no reason for them to exist. Now that natural gravity exists, and presumably planets will do something very similar, hovercraft do have a big purpose if you're on a planet. In a high-gravity environment, spaceships are a little bit tough to fly. Uh, they're very finicky in specific ways, and I'm sure that you've felt that if you've ever tried to fly one. Uh, we're going to talk about what hovercraft can do, what the three kinds of hovercraft are, how to build them, and that sort of stuff. The fundamental idea of a hovercraft is that it exists to counteract the forces of gravity, meaning that you can fly a hovercraft as if there was no gravity, or as if the gravity was very low. Uh, there's a little bit more to it than that because of the way it works when you tilt and stuff like that, but fundamentally the idea is that a hovercraft flies like it's in zero g. And that means that it's very, very maneuverable, it can stop and spin with pinpoint accuracy, uh, it can aim very carefully and uh, strafe without falling to the ground and, to ex and exploding and all that stuff. Now uh, there are three kinds of hovercraft. Fixed engine hovercraft, active outrigger hovercraft, and passive outrigger hovercraft. Let's start with the passive one. This is one that a lot of people are probably going to uh, think about using. The idea is that you've got these outrigger engines. These are engines attached by pistons or hinges or rotors or whatever, but these engines are not actually set up with any kind of overrides. Now, because they're not on the same physics grid, they have a different uh, behavior. So if I were to hit space, my engines underneath will fire, but the outrigger engines will not. So why would I ever want this? Well, the outrigger engines are perfect for inertial dampening. So long as I leave inertial dampening on, these outrigger engines will automatically fire at up to 10 times their normal rate of fire in order to keep me from falling to the ground. So it's going to be difficult for me to take off, though, because I don't have very much upwards thrust. So for these sorts of things, you've got to have some kind of takeoff maneuver like this. And then you're generally going to have to use your primary rear engines to gain altitude. But you can see that I'm not really falling nearly as much as I would be if I was in a spacecraft. So functionally, I have set this up such that it is operating uh, as if it were in a very low gravity. Moreover, because those always act to counter... They're, they're, the inertial dampening always fires to counter my velocity, this, always, this also allows me to stop very aggressively, and unlike other kinds of hovercraft, it won't force you to drift if you turn. Instead, you can turn without, without any drifting at all. The problem is that it doesn't fully counteract your velocity. No matter how many outrigger engines you apply, it's always going to uh, uh, only partially counteract the force of gravity, because it's only trying to fight it, it's not trying to counter it entirely. Also, you can see that my core engines are much more actively pushing against it than my, uh, than my outer engines, and that's because of the nature of how it prioritizes uh, engines. There's really nothing I can do about that, but the big advantage here, as I said, is that those will continue to fire correctly regardless of what I'm trying to do. So if I am, you know, pressing down and moving like this, those engines are always going to be available to fire properly to slow me down regardless of what I'm doing. Uh, unlike uh, engines which are attached, those will always try to inertial dampen. Now, engines that are properly attached to your ship do not. So, for example, if I were over here and those engines were attached to me and I hit C to move downwards, they would not try to counter my motion. They would say, oh, well, he's trying to move down, so we had better stop trying to counter him. And then you'd fall like a rock. So by having them on outrigger engines, you do get them to continually function, uh, even when you are trying to maneuver in a weird way, and that makes them valuable. Moreover, because they can operate at up to 10 times their normal thrust, you can use relatively small outrigger engines and get a lot of force out of them. But that's not really my favorite kind of ship. I don't like the uh, sloshy way that it handles. It feels very much like you're flying through mud. So I generally do not create ships like that. I'm not going to delete it, though. I'm just going to move on. 
The next kind of ship would be the attached engine ship. So I've got these fixed engines attached to my ship, and they have the exact same... Uh, uh, they're on the exact same physics grid, but I've overridden them so they have a specific amount of thrust. And no matter what I do with the rest of my engines, they'll always fire with that thrust. So they counteract gravity perfectly, as you can see. They're probably a little bit too strong, but uh, this allows me to fly around as if I were in an ordinary environment with no gravity at all. Uh, the problem with these fixed engines is that they do react to your... Um, uh, to your attempts to maneuver. And so you have a lot of, uh, of sudden sliding. So it's kind of the opposite problem of the, of the outrigger engines that I just showed you. The passive outrigger engines, you feel like you're flying through mud. But with these, you feel like you are uh, sliding. And the reason for that is because it is saying, okay, well, he's got some thrust pointing downwards, and that means he must want to go up. Therefore, his upwards engines should never try and slow him down, ever. Because of that, you will always be moving upwards if you're not careful. You will, you will lift off of the ground and start moving upwards, and you'll continue to move upwards. Uh, moreover, the downwards engines also malfunction in specific ways. Oh, well, assuming you don't slam into something and die. Uh, looks like I broke my reactor. Well, who cares? The point is that because those engines are attached, the, facts that, they, the fact that they are fixed engines uh, and they are set to thrust means that your ship will presume that that's the direction you want to go and it will never try to stop you from going that direction uh, which leads to all sorts of problems with the inertial dampener never working right so my favorite kind of ship is the active outrigger which is over here The active outrigger is just like the passive outrigger, except that the engines are set to continuously fire. Now, the biggest advantage of this is that it doesn't interfere with your maneuvering at all. So if I, if I want to go up, it goes up fine, and then it breaks fine. It understands that I don't want to continue flying up at ever greater and greater speeds. If I want to move forward, it works fine. If I want to move left, it works fine. It always works fine. The problem with this approach is uh, that it is definitely a hovercraft, and the thrust is going to go in whichever direction it is pointing. So if you were to tip forward, you're going to move like a helicopter. You're going to kind of start to drift forward and down. And if you move left, you're going to start to drift left and down. See? That's a problem with the fixed engine as well, but uh, unlike the fixed engines, these don't interfere with your inertial dampening. So, what are the other advantages of these outrigger, active outrigger engines? Well, although I'm not going to be showing you how to do it, you can make these outrigger engines do some pretty complicated stuff involving the rotors, or the hinges, whatever you're using. So, for example, if I were to do this, I can point them backwards, and I can hover like this, or I can point them forwards, and I can hover like this, which is great if I want to fire downwards into a crowd of people or whatever. Now, this doesn't do it automatically. This ship is not set up to do any kind of automatic adjusting. Um, that's partly on purpose and partly because uh, I don't really have the time to work on it. But the point is that you can. There are at, there's at least one submission that does automatic adjusting, and you can always rely on these engines to fire straight down, regardless of where you want to, where which how you're tilted. Another thing you can do is you can use. Uh, outwards and inwards thrust, so you can move them out and in, although this ship is not designed with that kind of hinge. Uh, and that will allow you to keep your ship from flipping if you start to move to the side like this. Uh, some of these hovercraft are pretty unstable and can start to flip, and that can help out with that. And it can also help to adjust the exact thrust of your engines, the effective thrust of your engines, by moving the two sides outwards so they're firing at like 45 degrees away from the center of the ship, and that, that allows you to bleed off some of their thrust uh, great for maintaining specific altitudes. And you'll see those kinds of ships on Monday. I'm not going to teach you how to do them, though. I will teach you how to do this one. So, 
So the real issue with these outrigger engines is that their physics is really finicky. Um, you have to understand the center of mass of your ship perfectly. If your center of mass is off by even a little bit, then your engines will end up firing off center. Now you think that's sort of simple, right? You're like, okay, well, all I have to do is hit I and hit info and turn on center of mass. There's my center of mass. All I need to do is make sure that my engines are placed properly in front of and behind uh, such that they're balanced. That's actually not too hard, but the issue here is the rest of your engines. Uh, so this center of mass, this is where my outrigger engines need to fire from. They, they need to be perfectly centered around this center of mass. And that means that my outrigger engines will always be able to perfectly lift without tilting. But my outrigger engines have mass as well. So if your engines are above your center of mass, then what happens when you press forward? What happens when you use these engines here. Well, why don't I go ahead and show you. Let's go ahead and just add in a bunch of mass here with these new extra heavy blocks. So I have moved the outrigger engine's center of mass above the center of mass of my ship. So what happens when I hit forward now? Since they are actually above my center of mass, I'm going to drift upwards. So the engines that I'm actually in control of, these two big engines here, they're firing below the actual center of mass of the ship, and that means that I'm going to be drifting upwards as I try and fire forwards. Similarly, what happens if I were to try and go right? I'm going to spin like this. Now this is a common problem that most people seem to have when they try and build hovercraft, and it's the big reason why so many hovercraft are really tilty and spinny and hard to make work. You need to make sure that all of the center of masses involved with your ship are perfectly balanced. Look how hard it is for the, to control this. So let's just go ahead and delete this. It's broken. All of your center of masses need to be aligned perfectly horizontally and all of your outrigger engines need to be perfectly aligned to encircle the center of mass. Let's take a look at a larger hovercraft. This is the Cumulo, and it's uh, a little bit more than two times as heavy. You can see that I have four outrigger engines, and they are perfectly horizontally aligned, and you can see that they are also aligned in a circle around, like in an X around the center of mass, meaning that this ship has perfect motion. It's not going to tip or tilt or any of that stuff. There's always probably going to be some tiny drift, uh, but you can work to negate that tiny drift if you know what you're doing. The way I have adjusted this ship to be perfectly balanced is I've used a space ball. Space balls have an adjustable mass, so you can force, if you put the space ball on the back or the front of your ship, you can force it to be heavier by just adjusting the kilogram weight of the space ball up. In turn, that'll let you perfectly balance it. So if you notice that you're drifting in a weird way, you know, if, you're, if your nose is going up, then you can turn this space ball down. If your backside's coming up, then you can turn the space ball up, and you can get it just right, which is what I've done. Now, this is a much more complicated vessel, uh, in, including a fair amount of automated features. So if I were to look over here, you can see it says off. If I hit 9, it turns my engines on, and you can see that they are all working fine. Now, this one is set to be a little bit light, meaning that in this one gravity environment, it actually rises slowly. Uh, I found that I prefer that a little bit, but it's up to you how you would like it. It's also got a safety cutoff, so that you won't accidentally slam into anything above you. That's actually not for bridges. The problem with hovercraft is always going to be that if you tilt, you can lose control and you can have a hard time gaining altitude again. Rather than the engines continuously firing to drag you into a wall and kill you, I've, I've made it so that these engines turn off if they detect that you're about to slam your upper end into a wall, because obviously that's not where you want a huge amount of thrust firing. You don't want to be forced into the wall using four heavy or eight heavy thrusters. That would be, that would be depressing.
Now this has perfect moment, a perfect uh, uh, center of mass, so it is very easy to use. It feels just like you're using a spaceship in zero gravity. Uh, it can aim very, very carefully, and you don't have to worry about accidentally screwing something up and slamming into the ground, assuming that the ground is beneath you. Obviously, if you were to flip upside down or go 90 degrees sideways, you'll have trouble. So I've been talking about how to do this and you know balancing all this out. You got to build the whole ship with an eye towards keeping your center of mass on the same line and all that stuff. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to build them, and I've talked about the major advantages in a technical sense. You know, they they do this, they do that. They're good. They're good for this. They're good for that. The best thing about them, however, is the way that they die. So let me go ahead and create a couple of clones. Oh wait, I can't create clones while it's parked because they'll just fall out of the sky. Let's uh Shoop. Let's make sure it's on and then clone it. There we are. You go over there. So I've got a couple of weapons. You saw me with my heavy missiles. I'm also I've also got a scatter gun here. So what's so cool about fighting in these hovercraft. Well, in addition to the feel of the gravity being interesting and neat, we also have the way that these things react when you start to blow off their nacelles. Now that's how mine reacts, because I have put Mimir in so that it will fail gracefully. You can see when I blew off the front right nacelle, the front, le the rear left nacelle flew away as well. It jettisons at the moment that the center of mass is going to become betur perturbed. As soon as some of the engines vanish or fail, you've got uh, some some effort. You've got to you've got to keep balanced, uh, and uh, and it's built to do exactly that using Mimir, a more ordinary hovercraft. Well, let's go ahead and balance it out perfectly here. Make sure that it's not going to float. Get in. When I fire at this guy, that's what normally happens. Which is pretty hilarious, and I really love seeing it. It never gets old. So that is the big reason that I like hovercraft. When you fight in a hovercraft, the endings are always epic, whether it's because your nacelles go flying away like mine, or whether it's because you flip and uh, and and gracefully tumble to the ground like like mine, uh, like my other one. I enjoy both of those failure modes much more than I like the spaceship failure mode of you suddenly just popping out of the cockpit. Also, both of mine have a firing controlled missile solution. The missiles are not vanilla because I can't get the vanilla missiles to behave. And uh, I hope I see you on Monday. If not, no biggie. There are lots of events. If you do build a hovercraft, let me know. Uh, go ahead and show me the blueprints and tell me what you've done. I'd love to see it.